Mammals have a very interesting evolutionary history, and during the time of the dinosaurs, some pretty significant developments were taking place in these ancient relatives of ours. One particular example of these important changes can be seen in a remarkable species of early mammal from the Cretaceous of Spain. Named Spinolestes xenarthrosus, this animal is incredibly well preserved, and thanks to the exceptional level of fossilization, a great deal of the creature's soft tissue can be identified. This has enabled paleontologists to gain a highly valuable insight into the organism's anatomy, evolution, and its likely lifestyle. Spinolestes was not a particularly large animal, but it was fairly medium-sized for a mammal at the time it lived, approaching lengths of around 24 centimeters, or 9.5 inches, and probably weighing between 50 and 70 grams. It lived approximately 125 to 127 million years ago during the early Cretaceous, and the rocks it was found in suggest it died in a freshwater wetland environment. The name Spinolestes is a reference to some of the integuments that was present on the animal, which includes structures called protospines. The spines are composed of multiple fused hairs that form tubules, and were located on the mammal's back when it was alive. The actual protospines were very small in size, at about a tenth of a millimetre in diameter, and possibly functioned in a comparable way to modern African spiny mice, where the spines can detach away from the skin if a predator tries to grip their back. But protospines were not the only kind of integument preserved in the remarkable fossil of Spinolestes. This specimen displays all sorts of mammalian features, such as long guard hairs, dense, softer underfur, and additionally dermal scutes along the back in the dorsal and pelvic regions. Using a scanning electron microscope, paleontologists were able to examine individual follicles of hair and look at the specific composition of the structures. So it was realised that the species possessed quite a variety of hair and integument types, showing all these characteristics to have evolved deep in the mammalian evolutionary tree. There's some fascinating pathologies displayed in the specimen too, with a few hairs in certain areas of the animal's body that are unusually shortened compared to others, and with far ends that are darkly coloured. The scientists were able to recognise this condition as being the same as some modern day mammals that have a fungal infection known as dermatophytosis, which would make it the first mammal known from the age of dinosaurs with direct evidence of a skin infection. Spinolestes is also important for more than just the fur that covered its body though. The fossil is so good that some internal organs have been preserved for millions of years too. Incredibly, there is a section within the ribcage of the fossil that appears to show soft tissue composed of tubular structures branching out from each other. Looking at the structure and the positioning within the body, this has been interpreted by paleontologists as being part of a fossilised lung with the branching representing the bronchioles of this ancient mammal. Then there's also an oval region that is coloured red-brown, and appears to be the residue of the liver that once existed in this individual. Again, the position within the body supports this conclusion, and liver tissue is known to produce a red colour due to the iron contained within it. Such fossil traces have been identified before, in the theropod Cypionix from Italy. In addition, separating the lung tissue from the liver is a boundary that corresponds to the diaphragm seen in modern day mammals. The soft tissue preservation doesn't stop there though. The left outer ear of this animal can be seen too, still attached to the fossil traces of the scalp, allowing us to accurately reconstruct what this piece of anatomy would have looked like on the live creature. As well as all this, the actual skeletal anatomy of Spinolestes has some pretty fascinating details. As the species name, Xenarthrosus, suggests, this creature had certain vertebral features present in its spinal column, known as Xenarthrus articulations. These are essentially added projections of bone that helped to strengthen the spine, and they are also known to occur in modern-day anteaters, armadillos, and sloths, a group known as Xenarthrons, and in the African hero shrew and some other prehistoric mammals. This means Spinolestes demonstrates a rather great example of convergent evolution between a few distantly related mammal groups, and also gives us an idea of what its lifestyle may have been like. Additional hints to this ancient mammal's lifestyle and behaviour include the anatomy of its forelimbs, which seem to have been fairly strong and with relatively large claws. Together with the Xenarthrus vertebrae, and the fact that the dentition of the organism was not reduced, 
Paleontologists have suggested Spinolestes was a versatile terrestrial creature that potentially had digging capabilities. The scientists also point to the living hero shrew genus, Scutisorax, as a possible example of what the ancient mammal could have behaved like. Perhaps, like the modern shrew, Spinolestes would have used its strengthened back to break off leaves from trees in order to search for insects and other invertebrates in its wetland environment full of vegetation. Spinolestes was recovered as being a member of the Eutriconodonts, an extinct order of mammals that existed from the Jurassic until near the end of the Cretaceous. And within the Eutriconodonts, it belonged to a grouping called Gobiconodonta. The Eutriconodont clade actually contains quite a few remarkably diverse prehistoric mammals, with the group as a whole challenging the erroneous idea that all Mesozoic mammals were primitive, tiny shrew-like things. Indeed, although Spinolestes has been compared to a shrew, the fact that it displays all these key mammalian hair structures that appear in modern species pushes back the record of such characteristics by over 60 million years, and shows how these creatures were anything but primitive. Clearly, as demonstrated by this animal and other relatives, the mammals were already becoming a successful, varied and distinct group of tetrapods during the Mesozoic, and it would only be a matter of time before they truly took off. That big old mass extinction probably helped them a bit too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.